looking at a report produced in 2001 of an experiment in Norway produced by the United States government and a group of oil companies, including BP, an experiment they called Deep Spill. You know, if you've been watching TV, you probably know that most of the oil from the BP oil disaster never made it to the surface, that it ended up in cloud layers in the sea. And uh, that probably came as a surprise to you. It came as a surprise to all the newscasters. It seemed to come as a surprise to BP and everybody. And uh, in fact, when they found the cloud layers, it was like, oh my goodness, what's that? But what would you say if I told you they already knew? In fact, they had known since 2000. When they conducted a study, and when I say they, I mean MMS and BP and a bunch of oil companies went to Norway and they put a spigot of oil at the bottom of the sea and they sprayed it up to see what would happen. So does this picture look familiar to you? It looks like the BP oil spill, right? But it's not. It's from 2000, not 2010. And they found cloud layers in the sea. They called it Operation Deep Spill. That was their code name they gave it. Because you can't do a big study like that without a good code name. And you're probably thinking, well, how come I know about that and you never heard about it on the news? Well, that's because the news sucks. The national networks have all the money in the world. But they never did what we did. We went to talk to the first people on scene. We spoke to Dr. Ray Highsmith of the University of Mississippi. He's in charge of a boat, the Pelican, which was the first research vessel on scene at the Deepwater Horizon disaster. Now, weren't you out studying at the time that the rig exploded? I'm Dr. Ray Highsmith at the University of Mississippi. I'm the executive director of the National Institute for Undersea Science and Technology. The observatory group was actually out there when the rig was on fire. What's the name of that ship? The Pelican. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but we, we wondered if there wasn't oil because of the dispersant, you know, that was floating somewhere. Right. Uh, why that didn't occur to others, I'm not sure. And there had been an experiment off Norway in 2001 or two, published in 2003, showing that if you release oil at depth, some of it stays there. And he did find oil at depth, but that's not the worst part. The worst part is what's in this report. And anyone who read this report would have read what it said on page 89, and I'll read it to you. This is important information because the water-soluble compounds are generally the most toxic ones when exposed to marine biota. That's, you know, marine animals. The results from these measurements show that the rising of the oil through the water column represents a kind of stripping process of some of the most toxic compounds in the oil. The end result is therefore that a portion of the most toxic compounds is left in the water column. You can't clean that up. It doesn't come out. And nobody wants to talk about it because nobody wants to say, well, they poisoned the water. The Gulf of Mexico has been poisoned. Uh, because it's bad for everybody. It's bad for everybody in, on the coast. It's bad for the economy of the United States. It's bad for real estate and fishermen and tourism, but it's important to say because toxic compounds cause cancer. 